Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make breakdowns in your tracks that are really full and epic and have a lot of contrast with the drops. The key to every hit song is to have a lot of contrast and energy throughout the track. So when you're starting out in the first verse, you want the energy to be pretty low, and then when the first drop hits, you want that energy to be a lot higher. Then the second verse comes in, maybe you want to be somewhere in between, there, and then when the last drop comes in, you want it to be even higher. So the breakdown is all about keeping that energy a little bit lower, but still filling it out and adding lots of movement and automation. So I'm gonna be using this track I'm working on as an example here. So I'm going to mute the vocal down here because the whole point of the break is to create a nice bed for the vocal to sit on, or if your track doesn't have a vocal, it's to create a bed for your break lead melody to sit on top of. So you're going to want to fill out the whole frequency spectrum, but do so in a subtle way. So I'll zoom in on the breakdown here, and I'll show you the individual elements that I have. So the first thing you would probably add would be the chords, and for this breakdown I have these chords right here. And like I said, movement is key during the breakdown. So throughout this breakdown, I'm having these chords open up with some different macro automation in Serum right here. I'm opening up the filters, I'm making it a little bit wider, and I'm even increasing the reverb amount throughout the buildup right here. So in a lot of demos I hear, people really just have some chords, maybe like a snap sound and the vocals in the break, but you want a lot more than that to fill it out. So I like to have a light bass under the chords in my breakdowns to fill out the low end, but you don't want to overdo it with the bass and the break. Because if the breakdown bass is stronger than the drop bass, then it doesn't give you that contrast we're looking for. So make sure your bass is lower in the break. So in this example, here's the bass sound I have. So it's a nice light bass sound. And you'll notice in the EQ right here, I'm reducing the low end. Just to make sure the sub frequencies aren't too strong in the verse so they come in stronger in the drop. And again, I'm opening up the cutoff of this bass sound throughout the break. Another key piece you probably want to add is some atmosphere, and in this case I have a bunch of atmosphere I'm adding in the background. So here's the three different atmosphere layers I have. So I have this cool little filtered vocal loop just to keep the energy moving. And you can see how I'm opening that up. Then we have this tonal hit that I made that has a ton of reverb on it. Then we have this other atmosphere over here. I'm gonna show you how I made it. So to make some nice sounding atmosphere like that, you're just gonna to wanna to get a basic synth sound going. So I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna open up Nexus I think, so I can go through some of the sounds they have. 
Let's use this bell sound here. And what I'm gonna do is make an arp sound out of it and then add a ton of reverb and delay to make it sound huge. So all I'm doing is making an arp out of a G major chord, which is the key of the track. So I'm just gonna copy this over a bunch of times. Actually, I can just loop this right here. And now we're gonna add a ton of reverb and delay to it, so it's not even recognizable anymore. some Valhalla Vintage Verb. I like this Mod Taj setting. And that makes it so it's not even really recognizable as an ARP sound anymore. It kind of just blends into a big atmospheric chord sound. So now I'm going to take that and just bounce it in place. Now you have that atmosphere sound bounced in place. And the benefit of that is it gives you a lot of control over it. If I go back to this atmosphere sound I made up here, you can see I'm automating some things throughout the buildup, like the gain of it. So it just really builds up that energy before the drop. Another really important part of breakdowns is to have a little bit of percussion just to keep the rhythm of the song moving. If you have no percussion, it's gonna get a little bit stale. So I have the percussion down here. And even though I'm using some filtering on this open hat sound, I still have this loop down here. Just keeping the rhythm of the song so the listener doesn't lose the rhythm, which is really important. I could even go more extreme with this filtering and automation. Like when the vocal first comes in, I could just filter almost everything out. So if I go to my synth bus here, all I have this uh, filter on here. I'm just gonna automate it down when the vocal first comes in. So like I said, the key to a good breakdown is the contrast between the drop and the break. And you want to have a lot of movement and use automation to create that movement. You also want to fill out the whole frequency spectrum, but do it in a subtle way. Use a light bass, have some chords in there, and definitely have a little bit of atmosphere in the background to fill out the space. Then use a little bit of percussion to keep the rhythm moving. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to some of you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. And never let it go.